Welcome back to this uh, build of your mag light. So far, uh, we've created the end cap, the end cap's rubber seal, and then the spring. So in this lesson, we're gonna be having a look at the main body of the mag light. Now you can see, if I just rotate that round, there's some detail here for the button to sit into, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna ignore this section. You should find the technical drawing for this part, which again, looks quite complex because there's a number of different measurements uh, on the drawing. But if we actually build it up step by step, really what we've got here is a cylinder with some hollows on each end and then a small amount of detail put in here for the rubber seal and the detailing on the main body. So we're gonna start our new part and we'll call this one main body. And looking at this, there's a few ways that we could build this. We could split it in half and we could do it as a revolve and try and get all of the detail at once. Or we could do it as an extrude and then add the detailing in afterwards as we go. Personally, what I want to do uh, for, the vi for this video is to try and keep it as simple as possible, which is we're gonna do this as an extrude. We're gonna ignore this detail here, and then we'll remove the interior at this end and this end, and then we'll add the details here afterwards. So, we're gonna start off with a cylinder, as usual, starting with exactly the same process in the middle and looking at our technical drawing the widest external damp diameter is 40 millimeters so we set this to 40 I like to change my view and this is going to be quite a long part so just looking up it is 212 millimeters Like that and we've got the overall dimensions now it doesn't matter which end we do we do first but I'm going to work from the bottom up and we can see if we zoom in this goes in three stages we go down four millimeters then 14 millimeters and then 124 millimeters all at different stages now as I start to work inside the part, it gets a little bit more difficult to be able to work things out, but not too hard. So the first one is a 36 millimeter diameter uh, extrude to remove down four millimeters. So I'm gonna look at the bottom of the part, start a sketch, sort out my view. That's gonna be 36 millimeters and we're gonna be going to extrude, remove, and we're gonna remove four millimeters. We can see that's going in the correct direction, and we complete that. The next one is just a repeated process, and this one is 35. I can see the arrows running down at 35 millimeters diameter, and that one goes down 14 millimeters. So sort out my view, I've already started my sketch. And we're gonna remove 14 millimeters. And then the last one, we just need to make sure we're angling and using our views and then concentrating to get the correct circle. And this one here, is 34 millimeters and this is going to go down 124. So 34 and if we look, let's bring it so we can see it that, that direction. So we're going to remove 124 and you can 
can see it's gone to somewhere over here. Now if we want to actually see that, if we go to translucent, then we can check our path. And this is where having this cross-sectional view, remember the hatches mean cross-sections, really helps us. So we can see in stages it drops down, and that's exactly what we've done here. So now we're going to work on the top, and we're going to use pretty much an identical process. I go back to select shaded, use the top of the part, create a sketch, and then we'll have a look at what we're actually drawing. Well, we've got a cylinder removed, so all the area removed, and that goes down by, ah, so this one I haven't actually added the detail, but we can work it out really easily because that's 30 millimeters and the overall distance is 42 millimeters, which means that that one there is 12 millimeters. So 12 millimeters down, and again, a little bit of maths involved just because we've got a three millimeter edge and we know that overall it's a 40 millimeter wide part. So if we do 40 minus three for this edge and three for that edge gives us a 34 millimeter gap. Is that in there? So 40 minus six is 34. So draw my circle, set it at 34 and we're going to remove 12 millimeters. Again, we can see how far it's going to go. And there we go. Now for this one, we are going to select and sketch on there. But looking at this, we want to keep an internal circle of 20 millimeters, but continue to remove the 36 millimeters down 30 millimeters. So a relatively easy thing to do. I'm going to set that as 20, but we're going to put another circle in at 36. Sorry, not 36, it was 34. And it should remove just this donut section here. So we can check that by clicking remove, setting that as 30. And you can see there it's starting to mimic up what we want. And again, we can set this is translucent, change our view, and we can see it's kept this part, but remove these two parts. So if I tick that, I've got the part I wanted remaining and the part I wanted removed, removed. So that's most of our main body done there. We can go back to it being shaded. You can see we've got our part. Now looking at our technical drawing, there's a couple of other bits of detail that we just need to add in. So there's a rim here which is set 18 millimeters down for the lower part of that rim and 16.5 millimeters down from the top edge here, which makes that 1.5 millimeters in that distance. And if we look at the additional detail we've got here, it's set, quite an annoying, 0 0.24 of a millimeters in. So how could we do that? Well, probably the easiest way is to draw a little sketch and revolve a remove, <coughs> excuse me, around our part. So let's look at how we do that. The first thing we need to do is it doesn't really matter which one of these planes we do it, but if we've done this correctly working off our dot, you'll see that they slice straight through the middle of our part. So I can click either of those I'm going to sketch on those and I should, if I can select a point and I'm going to put my point basically anywhere I want. Now we know that the diameter here 
was 40, which would make the radius 20. So I'm referencing off that middle, and I'm going to set that as 20. Now, the lower part of that, if we look here, was set 18 millimeters. So I want to put my dot at 18 millimeters. So if I select this here and that there, and I take that to 18 millimeters, that is now a reference point exactly where I want it. So I can use this, zoom in, and I'm going to go in by 0.24 because that's that distance there. I'm going to go along by 1.5, up by 0.24, and then join it to make a square. So let's use the line tool, any length line, but we want it to be parallel, and we're going to make that 0.24, so a short line. We then go up 1.5. We can just use the referencing that the program gives us, like so. And that there will then allow us to do a revolve. So we're going to tick that. We're going to zoom out, go back onto this sketch and just draw ourselves an axis. Any length axis doesn't matter. Tick that. And then we're going to use our revolve. So we're going to zoom back in and we're going to select what we want. Just because it's a little bit hidden, I just drag the square over it there. Click on the revolve the axis, pick my axis. And we're going to remove. And we can see it's removed that rim. And we're going to tick that. And that's going to give our first bit of detailing that we wanted. Now the other bit of detailing we've got is this little triangle sat in here, which is 0.5 of a millimetre in between 12 and 14.5. So it's 2.5 millimetres across, 0.5 in. Now, rather than doing that whole thing again, what I'm going to do is go on my original sketch here, double click it, which is going to reopen it, and we're going to draw both in at the same time. So if I use my dot and I move up from there, and I'll do that a random distance, I can see that if that's 14.5 and that's 16.5, there's a two millimeter gap between the top of that part and the start of my part here, or my bit of detailing that we're adding. So if I use my measurement tool and click on that and that, and I set that as two millimeters, that's the start of my part. And then I'm gonna go 2.5 millimeters up, draw a line, I could do this as a box, so I could then come down and I can see here it's 0.5 and draw that as a box and then just make it into a triangle. So let's do that then. We're going to get our line and we're going to go 0.5. We're going to go up and that was two millimeters across and there's a box. But for this one, it wasn't actually a box. So if I go and find the middle, and you'll see it snaps on, I can click on the middle and click up. Click on that part, click up, and then I'm going to remove this, 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 and this. And that should leave me with the part I want to remove. Now we've drawn these all on one sketch, and we've already done our revolve. So when I tick this, should and I'm not sure why it didn't ah, that's why if I double click on my revolve and I go on the faces and sketches 
I also want to pick that one. There we go. So I just hadn't selected the part I'd drawn. I can tick that. And that is my main body drawn with all the details aside from the button which we're going to add later. So we just built that using extrudes, using some removes and using what we already know how to do which is a couple of revolves but we actually set points this time to help us locate our drawings. I'm just going to edit the appearance of this, make it the same as my other piece and that's done.